Good day everybody and welcome to your 39th chapter in your Java E7 tutorial series. In this tutorial we'll be talking about the JPQL or its long form Java Persistence Query Language. So what is Java Persistence Query Language? The Java Persistence Query Language allows developers to easily retrieve information from the database and quickly and effectively use it in our code. Previously, we would only be able to persist data into a database and only retrieve it in very specific ways, like using an ID. Then this retrieved data would be immediately spit out to our user without any interaction with our code. Now let's take a look into what JPQL and SQL have in common and what their differences are. With JPQL, you can retrieve data from the database, which is considered, it's called querying, in entities instead of tables, like in SQL. This makes JPQL ideal for Java developers because these entities can then be inserted back into the business logic without having to convert it like in SQL. JPQL has a SQL-like syntax, making it easy for developers with SQL experience to write with it. Now, there are a few uses of JPQL. They can be used for, for example, the best plane ticket price based on the criteria of the user, finding the closest Tim Hortons to you, or checking if a person is present in your class or not. JPQL can be used in many, many instances. Now, before we start, this chapter relies on information presented in chapter 37 and 38, the introduction to the Java Persistence, Persistence API. Uh, if you haven't watched those, go check those out before you uh, get, go into this video. So now that you got that, let's go right into creating queries. So when creating queries, which is syntax that allows us to get the data from the database, we can either use a dynamic query or a static query. Now, dynamic queries are basically the user can specify the type of data he may be looking for. Let's take a look at this example over here. Here we can see that the user can specify the name of the customer. As you can see, you can specify it inside the parameter. And then, uh, then like the JPQL code will find the results for you. This name will then be inserted directly into this customer name. And then this parameter is just setting up for this customer name over here. All this query is saying is that select, uh, select from the tape from this table where the the name of the customer is like the name that you inputted and the maximum maximum results will be 10 and it'll give it to you in a in a list result so these queries are defined directly in the business logic now static queries are like storing queries in a variable to make it easy to use one query many times looking at this example we can see that the name of the static query is find all customers with name and its query is stored inside this query variable. We can then use the find all customers with name static query in an example. Watch how we don't need to define the entire query, just the name of it inside the method create named query. Instead of defining this entire thing, all we're doing is we're taking the name of the query and we're inserting it into this create name query. Okay, so next let's take a look into our name parameters in queries. Name parameters are query parameters that are fixed, prefixed with a colon. Here, the cust name over here is bound to the name from the cut parameter, which means that once again, like I told you before, um, the name is set to this customer name, which is then this th then sets the parameter inside our query. Alternatively, you could use pos you can use positional parameters instead. This is what using them looks like. So instead of using like um, a colon and then uh, put a putting a variable in front of it, you can put a question mark and then put a number in front of it, like one, and then use that number to then set the parameter. Let's say you want to set the parameter to name. Okay, so this part of the episode briefly goes over the language of JPQL. There is more information, but this is all you'll need for the rest of this tutorial. First of all, let's take a look into our select statements. So the select query defines six clauses to select the information you want from the database and retrieve them for you. First of all, select statements. So first there is your select 
um, clause, which defines the types of the objects or values returned by the query. The from clause, which defines the scope of the query. The where clause, which is a conditional expression that restricts the objects or values retrieved by the query. And the group by clause, which groups query results according to a set of uh, properties. Pretty self-explanatory. The have, having clause, which is used by the group by clause to further restrict the query results according to a conditional expression. And finally, the order by clause, which sorts the objects or values returned by the query into a specified order. Now, the update and delete statements are really similar like, like that as well. These statements actually change the data of the database. Instead of selecting from a database and giving it to you, it actually changes up what you see in the database. And that's it. That's all there is about Java Persistence Query Language. Once again, there are a lot of more examples of queries, but right now that's literally all you need to understand. All those six select statement queries and the two update and delete statements. And that's it for me. Um, that's all there is about this tutorial. And I will see you in the next tutorial where we'll be talking about how to use the criteria API to create queries. Until then, I will see you in the next video.